Welcome to the Star Wars Connection. Today, we are going to tackle one of the hottest topics um, for discussion among Star Wars fans since The Force Awakens premiered in December 2015. And six months later, we think it is a good time to take a fresh look at the subject of Rey's lineage, her mysterious origins, or heritage. Today, we're going to have Mary. Hi. Hello. And Denise. Hello, everyone. And my name is Lisa. And we're going to have a good discussion about Ray's parents and her background. Yeah, um, I think like one of the reasons why it's such a big topic is because Ray was such a big mystery. You know, her background was made to be a big mystery when she said to BB-8, oh, I'm waiting for my family. They'll be back one day. Yeah, I think so too. Even some people say, oh, why do people only talk about it? But, you know, what's her sole goal that we know? to find her family so she's like waiting for her family she wants to go back for her family she's told not to wait for her family so it, it, the movie does stress a lot on it so it's not that we are putting that much importance but the movie itself brings it up as a very important topic and a very important part of race characterization i agree <laughs> Yeah, and of course, of course, with her, you know, like Ray's skills, like her force sensitivity and her, her, her skills in general, which we'll get to later, that's also made it much, much bigger, I think. Or oh, it's another reason why it's made it much more bigger as well. And um, after the movie came out, I think most of the audience, I think if you ask most people in the street, they would automatically assume that Ray is, of course, Luke's daughter. And I have an, I was just looking at an online survey, um, just a general survey of who are Ray's parents. I think 74% pick Luke Skywalker, 11% Ben Kenobi, 5% Emperor Palpatine, and um, other was 10%. So it's like, you know, without the audience that most people think she is the daughter of Luke Skywalker. Well, I think a lot of the reasons why a, a lot of fans wanted uh, Ray to be Luke's daughter was because they wanted a good, you know, light child uh, to continue Luke's legacy in- instead of just Kyle- Kylo Ren being the only one on the dark side. Along with the fact that um, they didn't like the fact that Kylo Ren destroyed Luke's Jedi, Jedi Order. And a lot of, um, you know, opinions on that matter is, be- is because in the uh, Legends continuity... Luke does, in fact, re-establish the, Je- the, new, the new Jedi Order, when, of course, in, this, in the new canon, it was uh, destroyed by Kylo Ren. But another reason why they want uh, Rey to be Luke's daughter is because in the Legends continuity, Luke marries a character named Mara Jade, and she's a wonderful, complex character um, who had a great relationship with Luke. You know, she's so popular, like one of the most popular Legends characters out there. And they ended up having a son named Ben, funnily enough. And so that fulfilled Luke's legacy, both in blood and spirit. And because of uh, this and Mara's popularity, they wanted her to be brought into the new canon, myself included at one point. (laughs) But uh, the trouble with that is, as much as I love Mara in the new canon, the problem with introducing her as Luke's wife and therefore Ray's mother is it, it would require a lot of exposition you know, like, to how and when Luke met her, why he loved her, you know, like, what happened to her. I think, it would, you know, it would just waste too much screen time and bog down, bog down the narrative when it's not needed. Yes, I'm just going to say that I think the, there is the big mystery, where is Luke? And this big mystery, what happened, where is Ray's family? Who, has, who are, who are Ray, Ray's parents? And people tend to put them together. I mean, usually in a movie, when you have a bunch of mysteries, usually you're going to have something tying them together. And I think it's sort of a natural conclusion to think that these two things are tied. But I think there's, it's a mistake to assume that. Mm-hmm. And I, I think also that a lot of people are going on what Kathleen Kennedy said, who is the producer um, of Lucasfilm and worked right under George Lucas. Um, quote, the saga films focus on the Skywalker family. The stories follow a linear, linear narrative that connects the previous six films. The Force Awakens follows Return of the Jedi and continues that generational story. So I think everybody was, ex- you know, taking her for her word and expecting it the main protagonist to also be just a Luke's daughter, like Luke was Anakin's son. So I think that has a lot to do with it also. Yeah. 
that, oh, sorry, that also adds to, you know, like, Ray being the good, light child and continuing Luke's legacy. Yeah. Yeah, so I agree with that. And something that I've noticed is that watching the movie, I don't think it poses uh, Ray as Luke's daughter. I don't think there is a red herring or anything that should draw us to the co- this conclusion because uh, she interacts with these characters that don't remember, I mean, don't seem to remember her, and we don't have any mention of a disappeared daughter, or disappeared niece, anything like that. So I don't think that's something that's important. I mean, not that important. I don't think it's something that's in the movie that you would say, oh, okay, I think she's the one, because I don't think... The Force Awakens has has that. No, like I think Han and Leia when they had that scene when they're talking about you know their son, I and how everything relates to Luke. I think they would have mentioned either a lost niece or a lost daughter after being a uh, restrained for so excuse me estranged for so long. Absolutely. I think most people, though, um, Mary and Denise, are looking at the visual images of this child. She's on a desert just like Tatooine, except for it's Jakku. Um, she's a good mechanic. She works with, you know, um, droids, and she's a pilot. I think that's what they're going on, and that's what the, that's what the film begins. And that initial impression um, informs everything that they view after that. Yeah, and not to mention, you know, like... Uh Anakin and Luke's lightsaber calling to her and Ma- and Maz saying to her, oh, there's someone who still could come back. And she goes, Luke. And people immediately make the assumption that it's Luke. Yeah, but, you know, I, I find that in that scene, you know, she says, who you are waiting for, they're not coming back, but someone else could. So I think there's a distinction between who she's waiting for and who would come back. So I think in that line, Mass separates this. And as to the lightsaber calling to Ray, in the Rebels cartoon, there's a scene, I mean, which is canon, there's a scene where the protagonist, Ezra, has a lightsaber calling to him. And it's not related to parentage. It's, it's because it's the lightsaber that belongs to the J- Jedi that's going to be his master. So we have this precedent where it happens, and it does not have to do with blood relation. No, of course. Excellent. So um, is there anything else that we can say that about Ray Skywalker that has since come out since the movie that says that she's not her daughter? I do have a quote from... Um, Pablo Hidalgo, who is the official historian for Lucasfilm, and he says on a Twitter, um, she is not waiting for Luke, she's waiting for her family, and she thinks Luke Skywalker is a myth. So there's no connection between her family and uh, Luke Skywalker. No. And of, of course, we have the big one. JJ, yes. um, JJ's uh, comment. Uh, Ray's parents are not in episode seven, so I can't possibly say this in the moment who they are. But I will say it is something that Ray thinks about too. That was at the uh, Tribeca conference in April, and of course uh, later later on, you know, he was caught. He was caught on, on video. It went viral very quickly. But of course later on, he clarified with a uh, EW. What I meant was that she doesn't discover them in Episode Seven. Not that they may not already be in her world. Uh, I think this uh, puts Luke, Luke and Leia off the table, reg- regardless, because they are in Episode Seven. You know, she does discover them. Yeah, as I agree. I think it's very clear, and I don't really believe in his, his retraction. Also, there's okay. something very interesting. When JJ said that, uh, there's a Daisy Ridley posted on a, there was an Instagram that posted this as absolute proof. Okay, Ray is not a Skywalker. It's a group of fans that don't want, didn't want Ray to be a Skywalker, and Daisy Ridley herself posted, "What can it all mean?" Like. <laughs> scared cats, which mm-hmm. for me seems very spontaneous that she's, oh, you know, so what now? The cat is out of the bag. She even had three cats, which for me means, okay, so it's okay. We can talk about it now. Yeah, yeah. And also the fact that um, a lot of uh, pe- people thought that JJ was lying um, about the retractment and uh, Ray's parents not being in uh, episode seven, obviously, but because of Star Trek Into Darkness, you remember all, that whole deal where he lied about Benedict Cumberbatch not being Khan, mm-hmm. and then he turned out to be Khan? Well, uh, J- JJ actually said that he regretted all that, so I think and hope that he learned his lesson from that whole ordeal. 
Yeah. Also, one thing more. After JJ said that the first time, not the retraction, Pablo Hidalgo, which uh, is from Lucasfilm Stories Group, posted, Kylo Ren is the Skywalker in The Force Awakens. But we knew that already, right? So it's, again, another reaction that's, uh, the, of course, you know, it's, it's Kylo Ren, the Skywalker, which means, you know, there's very spontaneous, very, um, after he says that, which for me means that they understood that, yeah, JJ put it, laid the cards on the table. That's how I see it. And, but for, I think for most of the audience, it's going to actually take sitting in the theater for episode eight. Um, for Luke to say, you're not my daughter, or some point like that, something like that, in order for them to believe it. I don't think anything that comes out is going to disprove it because, you know, they have confirmation bias, where that's the original impression. Yeah. And for a lot of serious fans, like um, Mary has said, especially fans of the EU, they absolutely want Luke to have a son or a child. And I think um, I think it's going to be, I don't know, sad for them when they, when they get to the movie and she's not his daughter. I, I feel for them. Maybe not. Maybe it's going to have a good story. Maybe Hopefully. It, <laughs> I hope they like it. I hope they I, like it. You know, in, in terms of the two mysteries, one thing that I would like for them to be somehow connected, uh, um, actually, yes. What about the other possibilities? The biggest popular theory is Ray Kenobi, and I think you, Lisa, can tell us about it, right? Yeah, I, I'm going to give you just a brief outline, because in all honesty, it would take like hours for me to go over like all the parallels that could be um make her related to obi-wan kenobi it would take a really long time so i'm going to do it really briefly um first we're going to talk about some of the media that was around before they started shooting for the first awakens and a lot of that was casting a casting call for um ray kenobi or granddaughter or grandniece of obi-wan kenobi and that was uh, something that was in many different sources. It comes from, it's sourced in many different papers, like the Hollywood Reporter, um, Entertainment Weekly, and I could go on and on. So it was, it was around, and it was around for a long time. I think at some point, um, after JJ and um, Abrams came on, uh, when they started to switch around some of the male characters, that identity or that casting, once they cast a Daisy, that started to disappear or the talk of a Ray Kenobi started to disappear. So that there's a lot of sources for that. Also, um, in the script treatments and in the Force Awakens concept art, you'll find a lot of correspondence between um, the concept art for Obi-Wan Kenobi from The Phantom Menace to the concept art for Kira or Ray for the Force Awakens, They're, they have the same, you know, hairdo. They have the same tattoo on the forehead, et cetera, et cetera. So there's correspondence there. Um, and um, since then, since the movie came out, of course, then we have the parallels. And some people say, well, aren't there parallels for Luke Skywalker and Anakin? Um, there are some parallels for Luke and Anakin with Rey, but what? is really rhyming, or in ring composition, is that Obi-Wan actually rhymes more with Luke in the first place. So if she's a protagonist on the hero's journey, that hero's journey is going to make her rhyme in ring composition. So um, just to give a little brief uh, definition of what ring composition is, um, ring composition is a narrative structure, according to Oxford Dictionary, um, in which the the narrative develops to reach its most significant theme before returning to a start, starting point. And to quote George Lucas, he says it's poetry and it rhymes. And that if we look deeper at his saga, we will find it's much more intricately, intricately made clock than most people imagine. And I'm going to quote a professor from cinema studies at the Drama at University of Toronto uh, on her analysis of The Phantom Menace. She says, um, Star Wars is not a series of narratively independent sequels and prequels, but it's narratively interlocking episodes and an epic mythological saga full of exotic locales and monsters. It's like the sagas of old, consisting of at least six mutually dependent parts interrelated um, in an intricately designed narrative, mythological and metaphorical whole. So what we're saying is that a character will almost always... uh, rhyme or do some of the same things one of their ancestors did or another character did previously um, in the series. And that's basically 
um, ring composition. And I have tons of of parallels, but I don't want to read them all. And I just want to thank some of the bloggers out there who keep track of these parallels, because that's basically where I get most of them from. Um, One is Peace, Passion, Raylo on Tumblr, and Gemini One Kenobi, who we all know, and she keeps great track of those parallels. So we begin um, Ray's life, and it begins, of course, on the desert planet, which is a lot like Luke and Anakin, but... Unlike Luke and Anakin, she's all alone. And, of course, Luke had Aunt Beru and Uncle Owen, and Anakin had his mother, Shmi. So they both knew their parents. They weren't orphans. The difference is Rey is being alone and solitary, just like um, Obi-Wan Kenobi was solitary for 20 years uh, of his life. Um, and that's where the difference is. And a lot of people will just say, well, they're kids in a desert and but if you look at a deeper narrative they're alone and isolated in a desert waiting for something or someone and obi-wan was waiting for luke to grow up and ray is waiting for the return of her family um and there's others but we can move on i mean that's basically it yeah i i've seen the parallels and i really like this analysis and how you know she rhymes and how the parallels i personally love the parallels in the snow fight and how it's so similar to mustafar but i i personally don't think that the in terms of the casting we don't know you know those rumors could have been you know and this story has changed but it could be it could be that sh- you know it's not impossible but i just find that the parallels don't really represent parentage because they have characters like Poe that characters really similar to Leia uh, BB-8 is really similar to r 2 and and they're not their children and also you have for instance you have Qui-Gon that rhymes with Obi-Wan in A New Hope and now rhymes with um Han Solo, I can't f- forget Han Solo, which is, which is funny, and nobody thinks they are related. And also, if you, if you take Luke and Anakin, they don't have a lot of rhyming. I don't think that's how they have very different trajectories, even though they both start in the desert and they both blow up something at the end of the first movie, but they're very different characters. Can I... Just let me interject really quick. Sure. The difference is Anakin and Kylo are the ones who are actually paralleling. They're on a different hero trajectory. They're on a dark side. So when you see the parallel, you'll see that Anakin rhymes perfectly with Kylo. And Luke and Obi-Wan are the ones that actually rhyme with each other. However, if you look at a deeper narrative, and if you look at the death of the mentor, it's actually Rey and Obi-Wan who who see their mentor stabbed through the heart and then have to proceed to fight a dark side or a Sith immediately after and wins. And then, and when Obi Wan won, he was the first Je- he was the first Jedi to kill a Sith in a thousand years. So he was considered a major virgin in the Force. And of course, Rey uh, defeats Kylo, and she's considered the Awakening in the Force. So if you look at a deeper narrative, if you just don't look surface, if you really go down and you track what's going on, you'll see that. Ray is more like Obi-Wan. Luke is a little bit on his own. He's a little bit like Obi-Wan and a little bit like Anakin. But Anakin and, and Luke and Kylo are much more narratively parallel to each other. And in fact, JJ did say that Kylo is the dark Luke. So he's Luke paralleling him on the dark side. Can I just add to your uh, analysis there, Lisa? Sure. Um, of course, when uh, Obi-Wan fights Darth Maul and Ray fights Kylo Ren... They bo- it both seems like they're tapping into the dark side or their anger, mm-hmm. almost. I don't know whether that's another thing you could go on. No, th- th- absolutely. They're both tapping into their dark side, but they neither of them fall temptation to it, which makes them different from everybody else. I don't think Luke ever falls t- too, too deep into the dark side, but he does get touched a little bit in Return of the Jedi to the dark side. Yeah, I actually think Ray does a little bit. It just seems kind of having some glee, you know, the camera angle, everything focuses on how she's she's almost mimicking Kylo then. Whereas, you know, with Obi Wan he was very quick and it doesn't seem that he was enjoying, you know, the kill. But you know, that's a matter of perspective. I, I, I like I said, I really agree that Ray has lots of parallels and lots of 
things that are common to Obi-Wan. Just don't think that these things, in a movie with so many callbacks and parallels mean parentage, but of course, you know, it's up in the air. We don't know. I, I, will, th I will say I don't think Rey is Obi-Wan's granddaughter specifically. And the reason for this is, you, you all remember her, uh, so, her, her, his love interest, sorry, Santine Chris from the uh, Clone Wars. Well, for me, the, the majority of um, the general audience who goes and sees the films will not have seen the Clone Wars cartoons and therefore won't know who she is. And not only that, but I don't. there was no hint of like a secret love child between um, Santine and Obi-Wan. I think if Rey was the, ch the child of Obi-Wan's child, I personally think that they, they would need to be an even bigger and more convoluted explanation because it would just make the general audience go, wait, what? Obi-Wan never mentioned having a child in the original trilogy. Why is he Why is he watching over Luke and not his own child? I mean, you could argue that, you know, Obi-Wan never knew about him, and you could also argue that they might make an Obi-Wan Kenobi spin-off movie. I don't, uh, I don't know They're whether... They're going to make an anthology for Obi-Wan. People are expecting at Star Wars Celebration in a couple weeks to hear that announcement. I mean, I can't confirm it. We're not sure. We'll have to wait and see. However, well, I will definitely tell you since I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> so people are expecting that announcement. They're expecting you and McGregor to walk out on the stage, and they're expecting either Steven Spielberg to come out and say he's going to direct it. I mean, they're expecting big things. So I don't know. Maybe it's a story that hasn't been told yet. Yeah, but I think you know, like making an Obi Wan spin off and then trying, you know, introducing a new love interest and you know her being Ray's mother and sorry, Ray's grandmother. I just think that you know. How, how do I explain it? It's, you know, it'd be doing it for, for doing its sake because there's nothing in the original trilogy and the new canon to uh, say that Obi-Wan had a child. Mary, um, oh. if, if you don't mind me interjecting, but there, they, there are hints that they are doing it for doing its sake, and I'll tell you why. Because J.J. Abrams, or was Kazan, who said that they really didn't know how to explain her and that they were depending on Ryan to fix it, and that's a quote. So they knew that they had to have in my th in my opinion, in my theory, they knew that they had to have Ray as a Kenobi. That, but when they took over the writing from Michael Arndt, that they just didn't know how to explain that part. But they yeah, never we they never deviated from that. What did change was the other characters. Sam turned to Finn, uh, you know, and Sam was originally supposed to be like an Anakin solo child, and of course Jedi killer. From what I can tell to the best of my research ability, which I'm pretty good at, is that he was supposed to have been Luke Skywalker's son. So these are the grandkids that George Lucas was leaving off. But we all know that George Lucas works in trios, so there would be two males and one female, just like the original trilogy with Han, Leia, and Luke, and of course like the prequel trilogy with Anakin, Padme, and um, Obi-Wan. So what George left them with, and I can quote Pablo, was with a girl who was trying to find herself in the Force. So that character has never changed. So I can see where they had to actually put something in, and they didn't really know why they had to put it in, and they just did it. And it rhymes, and that's wh where they're at with it. But I, I really find, I'm, I mean, I think it can happen, but if it, if it happens, it's going to be for the story, and they're going to have something. I can't see them adding this, oh, because they're also doing it for the new people who are watching this just now, and they're not going to see, oh, it's this character that you've never heard of, but you know we're doing it because it rhymes. It just doesn't make sense, unless it makes sense in the story, which could be, because you're not grandfather, you can do anything you want with the parents. Which brings me to my next point. Um, don't know if you're aware of this, but in, a, in the original EU, well, back, back way back in the 1980s when Return of the Jedi was being written, in fact, even before that, Owen Lars, you know, like Luke's uncle, was meant to be Obi-Wan's brother. I do know that, yeah. Yeah, and you've, you even got the you know the 1995 encyclopedia saying that Obi Wan was sorry Obi Wan and Owen Lars were uh, brothers, and in the uh, Return of the Jedi 1983 novelization he says to Luke, you know like um, Owen Lars was my brother, but of course George Lucas uh, we wrecked on this I think that's the right correct Retcon, word on yeah he did uh, when when he made Attack of the Clones and made Owen Lars um, Anakin Skywalker's stepbrother. Mm -hmm. But it does bring up the question of whether, you know, there are more Kenobis out there and maybe Rey is descended from one of them, maybe from another member of the Kenobi clan. 
Yeah, I, I would, I'd rather that than just, you know, actually, the, there was this one night with the, the death sticks, you know, he went to the most Isley cantina and had a weird night. That's the only way I can explain it. Mm-hmm. But, you know, if it's a brother, I, I, I think it would make more sense for me, at least. Yeah, it would make more sense to me for me as well, personally, if she was descended from another Kenobi instead of Obi-Wan. Because I just think it would be, you know, t- t- too convoluted for the, na- for the narrative. Okay, and for me, uh, we'll conclude the Kenobi section of this talk, um, mm-hmm. saying that I would prefer that she'd be Obi-Wan Kenobi's granddaughter, just for the simple fact um, that I think... Obi-Wan deserves redemption. I think he deserves something in his life. He spent his whole life taking care of Skywalkers, and I think having a granddaughter would be a wonderful thing for Obi-Wan. <laughs> there are some similar theories to that, but they, you know, Quinlan, do you know more about it, uh, Mary, the other characters that could be, you know, it's sort of similar to Kenobi, like Quinlan Vos and other Jedi, and some people do see similarities and do, but I don't know. I'm not so sure they would just pull a character from the um, expanded canon now. But, you know, it could be possible that it's just another Jedi. Well, some some people theorize that um, Ezra Bridger and Sabine Wren um, could be her parents. But I personally don't think this could work because for two reasons. Number one, that ethnicities, I think I've butchered that word, I'm sorry, are different because Ray is white, Sabine is Asian, and I think Ezra is brown. But um, rega- regardless of that, again, I know I'm using the same argument here, but I just think it would be a bit too complicated for the general audience who haven't seen the Rebels cartoon and therefore would have to maybe rely on even more exhibition to explain who Ezra and Sabine were and their back- backstory in rebelling against the Empire. And personally, I think the cartoon should stay as an extension with callbacks and foreshadowings here and there, like Ezra picking up a crossguard saber, um, similar to Kylo Ren's. But, yeah, that's my opinion on why um, yeah. I don't think Ezra Bridger and Sabine Wren are her parents. Yeah, I don't think so either. And some people also mentioned the couple from the book Lost Stars, but that's the same thing, you know. The movies, according to Lucasfilm, are going, are, they stand on their own. So you shouldn't need to read or watch extra material to find that. So you're, they're not going to pull characters from uh, these places. No, I don't think so. I don't think they would either. And, and honestly, I don't think they would set her up, her identity up as a mystery uh, if they were just going to go ahead and give her parents from another part of the Star Wars universe. I think they would just introduce her from the time she was young, let us know right away who her parents are, but they've introduced her as a mystery. So so for that, for me, Ray Random's out. She's going to be somebody, and it's going to be somebody you know. Okay, I'm going to talk about Ray Random right now. Uh, That is a theory, and the reason for it, that some people really want it, it's because, you know, the idea that anybody can be the hero. You don't have to be special for it. And this is something that's very appealing. And then, why the mystery then? Well, the mystery will not be who her parents are, but what happened to her. Maybe, I don't know, she was caught in a conflict with something uh, that is related to whatever Luke is searching for. There are many, many reasons how that could be set up and how it could be satisfying in a way that it would affect the future story. And I, JJ seems to want that. I have a quote from him. He says, I really feel like the assumption that any character needs to have inherited a certain number of midichlorians or needs to be part of a bloodline. It's not that I don't believe that as part of the canon. I'm just saying that at 11 years old, that wasn't where my heart was. And so I respect and adhere to the canon, but I also say that the Force has always seemed to me to be more inclusive and stronger than that. So that's a possibility, you know, that he thinks the Force is more inclusive. But on the other hand, he also says that he adheres to the canon. So it goes both ways. But how would it work? It would work about the, the her story would be the big thing, not who the parents are. Yeah, and actually I have a quote here. From uh, Kaylee Fleming, you know the young actress who played uh, little, you know Minnie Ray in the Force Vision. Uh, she said in an interview back in 2016 that she wore war war clothes W A R uh, in in that scene. This and, could possibly hint. Sorry, be, go on. 
to me, that sounds like it probably could be a Mandalorian situation with Satine. I know that you guys don't like that theory. I'm not even big on that theory myself. But when you're talking about clans and, and war clothes, that's something that's very typical of Mandalore. And also, as far as JJ saying about bloodlines not being important, and then a book comes out later called Bloodlines. And then, of course, if you look at Finn's hat, when he, right before he decides not to shoot anybody, when he loses a compatriot, there are three bloodlines on his helmet. So I look uh, at, I don't take JJ too seriously. I understand his sentiment because I w- I'm in the same age range as he is. And I can remember seeing Star Wars and thinking, yeah, it's possible that anybody can use the force. But then there's the evidence that's actually in the film and what they've done since with the book. So I don't know if I, I put too much stock into what he says. I don't know, that's a good point. But um, I was going to say, this could possibly hint that Rey came from a war-torn planet and not just, you know, Mandalorian one, but certainly one with a lot of conflict, because we know from the script and the novelization that one of their parents said, I'll be back soon, sweetheart, I promise. So maybe like one of her pe- one or both of her parents dropped her off with the intention to keep her safe and had every intention of coming back to her, but they... they uh, pro- most obviously died in the conflict, sadly. Okay, uh, I was going to say that as far as that quote goes, um, that quote r- and rhymes on a ring composition with o- Obi-Wan telling Anakin that he would be a Jedi, I promise. And of course, sweetheart is something that Han uses a lot. So I'm not sure it was her parents who told her that. Ooh, who do you uh, think it could be? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, thinking, I'm thinking Ben Solo told her that, but I honestly don't think he told her that on Jakku. Okay. I think they got separated okay. way before. Different, no, no, different no, no. show. Different show. We're, we're going to debunk that that Ben Solo has ever. Uh, I was going to talk about it before, but I forgot because the timeline does not support it. It doesn't support him dropping her off, but I'm of a firm belief, through understanding Kasdan's parallel style of writing, <laughs> that he does know who she is and he knows who she is when he says it is you he, I just don't think he's the one who dropped her off I think well, if they got separated it was before that's my but, wild out there theory was, okay okay she was dropped off like 15 years before The Force Awakens 15 years before The Force Awakens he was a regular teenager living with you know maybe living with his mother or being raised by c 3 po who knows I think and, you know, he was already with Luke at that point Going off Galahantin with yes, they were off on adventures. They were off on adventures. In the in the book Bloodlines, which is six years before uh, the Force Awakens, he is out there with Luke hunting for things. I don't think he'd been there with Luke for so long, and nothing serious seems to have happened. And also, the line "It is you" has been clarified to mean that it means the awakening that he felt. So he could have the the fact that he's says it, it's you, it means maybe he had a vision about her, maybe she's someone with a prophecy, lots of theories that could happen, and remember that he goes into her mind, into her mind, and he's, you know, who is her, he's, you know, really curious about it, if he, I mean, he would have recognized, plus she wears the same hairstyle, I mean, come on, if he had no yeah. he would have recognized, but, you know, he goes into her mind, it's not like he's you but know, it, I think he experienced a blockage where he couldn't get past when he goes in her mind. He couldn't well, get I was there. Gonna, I was going to say when he when he got, when he catches her on Takodana, he would have recognized her straight away then because you know like if he did drop her off on Jakku, you know like we see in the Force vision that she has the same hairstyle as uh, Denise just said, and he he would have thought. Hang on, this it, this is this is too much of a coincidence for this girl to have the same skin color, same coloring, and same hairstyle to be a different person for the same planet. <laughs> yeah, same planet too. Just to clarify, I don't think he dropped her off on Jakku. Just to no, clarify, I, I I I think that has been debunked. I really do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if plus, plus he said, you know, the line the girl I've heard so much about basically just proves this. He he doesn't know her. I don't think. 
Yeah, and it's interesting because lots of people still have this, uh, uh, still imagine that th they are related. That even the destruction of Luke's Jedi, whatever school, has to do with uh, Ray being dropped off. And it seems that they're not related at all. If they're related, it's on a deeper level, you know. And even people complain about the book Bloodline, saying that the timeline doesn't make sense because they're so stuck with this idea that you know maybe the events are related, maybe Ben dropped her off, and the even the idea that maybe they knew each other, which seems rather unlikely because they were in different places, different conditions, and I think it's unlikely as well because he meets her and doesn't recognize her and goes into her head and doesn't recognize her. So, but yeah, you can maybe think that maybe he met her, but she would have been a little girl of less than four. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know if it makes a lot of sense. I know, but it's it's something to do with ring composition, and it's it's something um, to do with Kazan's parallel writing. That if you watch the visual storytelling of Star Wars, at the end when Luke recognizes her, it's the exact same shot, except it's in daylight, as the moment when Ray pulls the saber. So it's. I can't, like, verify it or say that it's true or not. I'm just saying it's a good working theory based on Kasdan's style and the way he wrote Empire Strikes Back and the way everything is absolutely parallel. So if you if things are parallel in Kasdan's world, if Luke knows who she is, which he does at the end, he knows exactly who she is, I then he does. It's according to the script. He knows exactly who she is and why she's there. And then I would assume that um, Kylo would also at that moment, finally wake up and realize it's who she is, and that's when he says, it is you. And of course, we've heard Pablo says, well, he says it's the awakening, but as we've seen with Obi-Wan, Obi-Wan was a virgin, and he was already Obi-Wan. You can be the awakening of something, and still people would recognize you for the person that you are. It could be both things. It doesn't have to be one or the other. Yeah, All right. Yeah, I, I, honest, I honestly think that I'll just go back to this quickly. He thinks, you know, she knows why... To, why She's there because, you know, obviously she wants to uh, learn from him and defeat the First Order, as it were, mm -hmm. in the force. But there we have it. Um, there was another, there was someone else who she's uh, definitely not related to, and that is uh, Jin Eriso, the uh, protagonist of uh, the, soon, uh, the upcoming Rogue One. <laughs> yeah, I know. Everybody wants them to be related. <laughs> yeah. I think it's yeah. because it's a gener it's a family saga, and they kind of want Rogue One to fit in this family saga. Which, no, it's a separated movie. But I understand the intention. Also, people are saying, "Hey, if she just looks. Where's the mother?" And they're like, "Okay, here's the mother." But no, you know, they're not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and also it's because you know, like Daisy Ridley and Felicity Jones are both you know like um, white brunettes and uh, excuse me, and British, of course. But this was quickly debunked by both Daisy Ridley and Pablo Hidalgo. And um, um, Daisy said in an interview with MTV, just because she's white and got brown hair, it doesn't mean she's my mum. And Pablo said on his Twitter account that he always liked the reasoning behind character resemblance must equal relation. To which someone asked him if he debunked the theory outright. His response was, they're not related. And of course, you've also got Kathleen Kennedy saying that the Star Wars spin-offs will not won't tie into the main saga. Yeah. Can, can you talk about uh, Ray Palpatine, maybe? The, that's another popular theory. Ooh, this, one, this one is a stretch. Oh. Um, <laughs> they say it, I know that they say it because she seems to go on the dark side. and th Some people say that the way she jabs with her lightsaber uh, is similar to him. And also, it's a desire to have this... I guess. I pray. It's cool as that'd be. But yeah, going back to your point, it, I think her jab, her jab and Kylo Ren is similar to um, Palpatine killing the Jedi in a uh, Revenge of the Sith just before he takes on Mace Windu. But in the in the EU, Palpatine was a member of the of a ruling Naboo family and had many mistresses. But it does bring up the question: Could could this be that you know brought over into the new canon? Could uh, something similar happen? Could Palpatine have had a mistress, had a mistress that gave birth to a child who uh, had Ray in turn? Well, I don't know. I think it's it could be it could be interesting. But I think just the fact that it seems that the her need for her family is something that maybe she needs to get over with. It might mean that her parents or grandparents are not really nice people. So maybe you know having dark side origins could be interesting. But how it's 
how it's done. That that's where it matters. I agree. I agree. I think it'd be too much of a stretch to have Palpatine as as the uh, as her grandfather. Yeah. I- I hate this theory. <laughs> yeah, I really do. I, I mean, as a li- just like you know, JJ being a lifelong Star Wars fan, Palpatine for him to have something as wonderful as Ray as a granddaughter would just be just terrible. It means I have to go back and watch the prequel trilogies and think, "Wow, Ray is going to be his granddaughter." Look at him. No, no. Okay, okay, but there is ruins the way I watch. No, no. So the rest people- of the, the the sequel and and the original trilogies yeah. for me, it would ruin it. I'm, I yes. wouldn't be able to watch it. Some people no. also theorize on Snoke, but I think he's very one-dimensional and very, you know, ca- almost cartoonish villain, and to be someone's blood relation, I think it requires more depth than that. Also, because we need to kind of finish this, I wanted to mention maybe the pot- possibility that uh, whoever Benicio Del Toro is playing could be her father. I think one reason to say that would be in JJ's quote, uh, that her parents are not in episode 7, it might mean that maybe they are in episode 8 or 9. And by the way, it doesn't uh, contradict the possibility of maybe Kenobi, you know, because it's a, a father. And it's just because it's someone that sort of would look like her, you know, similar hair color. He's also white, I mean, even though... Um, and Isn't he Puerto Rican? Yeah, but he's white. He's, he's pure, he's Caucasian, he's European. I mean, okay. he, he usually plays characters that are more tan, but if you look at old photos of him, he's pretty white and he has hazel, hazel eyes. Yeah. So it's possible just because it would be something that would bring conflict and would bring something to the story. But, you know, it doesn't, and it, it seems that he's playing some sort of villain. But then is it too much of a rehash or is it, is it interesting? I don't know. And, can I go into one more theory now? Absolutely. There is the King Prana theory. It's from our friend Lena, the King Prana enthusiast. King Prana is mentioned is the one that uh, Han is taking the Rathras to. And the idea is that for fairy tale things, uh, Ray has this lost princess. You know, we have this myth or these fairy tales about the lost princess. But then you think, well, but there are no kings in Star Wars. Well, actually, there is a king that's mentioned in The Force Awakens, which is King Prana. And Prana means the Force. So it seems interesting. Another possibility is that there is some relation to the Dubrovnik setting, which is sort of similar to On Their Own. And On Their Own, the, the, the royal family had the name Kira, which is her first name in the production. But of course, it could be only coincidence, but it's an interesting tidbit. What is the possibility, do you think, that Benicio Del Toro will play King Prana? Yeah. I I don't think there's a possibility. (laughs) I think King Prana is going to mirror Jabba the Hutt, and we may not, you know, I think, my theory is uh, Benicio Del Toro will probably play maybe a bounty hunter. If you go on Ring Theory, each of the middle trilogies has a bounty hunter. And so I would guess he's going to be probably a bounty hunter and Prana might be like a CGI character in the vein of Jabba the Hutt because they need one. Yeah, it could be. It could be absolutely. If if he shows up, he might never show up, you know, mm-hmm. but if he shows up, it would be really fun because it would... If you, remember, really- if you remember back in A New Hope, we heard about Jabba when yeah. he was speaking with Greedo in Moss Eisley Cantina. You didn't see Jabba until Return of the Jedi. Well, actually, they redid A New Hope, especially. I know, I know. It was up, which is up, but, you know, I'd rather he never showed up. It's the same, because, like, that is... I came out first before A New Hope, so, yeah. I'm sorry? I said Return of the Jedi, the original, where Jabba, that was first introduced, came out before A New Hope special, so... Yeah. So the, 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 the Force Awakens is mirroring a new hope in that way where it's Han talking about a deal gone bad and we're talking about a character and that character didn't show up until the third part of the trilogy. Yeah. So we might hope that he might show up. Maybe there is a possibility he could be her father. It would be interesting. Maybe as maybe no, we don't know. Okay. I think that's the one. And the last one is Ray chosen one. Ray uh, Anakin reincarnation. I think if she's a chosen one, some sort of chosen one doesn't change any of the parentage theories. Some kind of Anakin reincarnation. I'm gonna say no because I don't see reincarnation in Star Wars. No. What do you guys no, think? I think no, well. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. 
no <laughs> come on because <laughs> yeah I, th- I just think it's not in the in the in that universe mm-hmm. they're not going to bring this to the universe just so so i don't think it makes a lot of sense it's fun to speculate but you know no she can mirror and you know it, without you know they're not going to introduce reincarnation i do have one like little quick theory that would be cool if she was a chosen one of for example yeah what if she, you know like um she dreams about the you know the island that luke is on you know like kylo ren says he sees the island when he uh, searches her mind and of course she goes to act two at the end which is the site of the first jedi temple what if she's a descendant from the very first jedi or some of the very first jedi and what kind of exposition would that take quite a lot <laughs> exactly i mean i think that i mean i i maybe i wouldn't mind it as long as she's not Ray Skywalker, I'm good. Yeah. I it, but I don't think it's like a possibility. I think when you're talking about creating like these extra characters that have never appeared in Star Wars, any original trilogy or people trilogy, you come across the same issues as people say, well, it takes too much exposition to talk about Luke Skywalker's wife who's dead, who had Ray or Ray Ken- or Obi-Wan Kenobi's wife. It's the same. And I think that, is going to be my biggest issue with the whole mystery box around her character. Are they going to have enough time to give me a satisfying conclusion to who she is? And See, I, I think it would be, you know, easier for the for the narrative to go down the Ray Random route because, you know, because there's not it'll be it'll be quicker because there's not like you don't have to explain Obi Wan and all this and all this. You just yeah. have to. I agree with that as well because we know we want so we're going to wonder where does the mother fit where if to say if it's yeah, she and John they were married like okay whatever you're not going to okay but explain how when you know it's and, gonna take it for and this time. is where we get genre confusion because as I read from the professor in Canada Star Wars is a mythological saga so when we're talking about mythological characters if you have the protagonist and you don't know where they're from like Harry Potter that story, the narrative begins when Harry is a baby and Dumbledore and Professor McGonagall drop her, drop him off at his aunt and his uncle. It begins there, just as the way um, Revenge of the Sith ends with Luke in Obi-Wan's arms. He takes baby Luke to Aunt Beru and Uncle Owen. This is the beginning of the random story. The problem is that this story didn't begin that way. It begins more of the... Uh, daughter or son of somebody really special and the way you tell they're really special is by the way they perform or the special acts or special skills and characters so that's where you come with an issue on genre confusion it can't be now at this point it's too late or the, it would have been a Harry Potter story we would have saw little baby Ray which I would have loved little baby Ray being dropped off or abandoned and left in Uncle Punk's hands and we would have begun her story a much younger does that make sense it yes. does, but it could yes. be someone special if it's someone that, you know, because, you know, look, they're looking for the first Jedi temple, Jedi relics. It could be someone related to all this search that they're going through. So it kind of joins the two stories. And, you know, we didn't know. But, you know? Yeah. I, could, I could see it working like maybe when Rey is training on Act 2 with Luke, maybe she has a vision, like of all the, you know, Jedi who came before for her. Maybe she sees the first Jedi who are her ancestors. Yeah, I don't know. It could it could be cool, but it we'll, could still be Kenobi. I, I have a quote. I have, I, have one la- I have one last quote, and then I have to get the Daisy quote. Yeah. Um, and this is from Colin Trevorrow. He says, "What's interesting is I'm not creating a host of new characters." He revealed, "I have a lot of characters that people really love, that we're going to make sure all are honored." And that's a quote from the director who's going to be directing Episode Ten. And of course, we have the quote from Daisy that says, "It's interesting that." Her and Finn are begin nowhere, and they end up finding people that they like and belong to, and that's much more interesting than um, who her ancestors are. Yeah, yeah, that's lovely. I think the question was open, and eventually we'll see, right? Absolutely. <laughs> All right. So that's going to be it for today. Um, I want to thank Mary and Denise, and this was Lisa. And if you want to subscribe to our YouTube channel, we'd love if you do it. Come back and listen to our upcoming podcast. I know we have some stuff on Ray's, um, Ray's Hero's Journey coming up really soon. Look forward to that. And we'd love to get your feedback. Leave a comment in the bottom. And if you want to email us, please email us at StarWarsConnection09 at gmail.com. Thank you very much. Thank you.